Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I'm just grinding up some, you know, graphite and some colonite in my uh, quern, you know, as one does. If you'd like, you can, you know, stick around and watch while I do this. I only have about seven more stacks to go. What? What's that? I you'd rather watch paint dry? Uh, well, I don't have any paint on hand, so how about we skip ahead in time? Hey folks, welcome back. I'm uh, done with the grinding, although I did want to demonstrate something, so I'll just do it here with this. Um, unlike in uh, classic TFC, if you grind, where you grind up uh, graphite or kaolinite and you get eight, uh, here in TNG you only get uh, four of the powder back. So, but I now have, uh, I've ground up, I believe, as much as I need. Hang on. So, the first thing we want to do in this whole process, oh, the, the goal of this episode is to uh, take all those resources that we've been, we found in the previous episode and use them to make a blast furnace. So the first step in that is to make a bunch of fire clay. And so the way we do that is we take kaolinite powder in the outer, outside corners of the crafting grid, uh, regular clay in the middle and graphite filling in the other spaces and that'll give us fire clay. Ooh, I got another advancement. Fireproof. Somehow I don't think I am fireproof, alas. Okay, um, so from this, one, two, three, four, five, we want to make something called a crucible. And so for that you need at least five uh, fire clay in hand. It's the same as regular clay. If you have a stack of more than five, then it'll only use five of them. But uh, you right click and then you nap out a big U shape. Well, I guess you nap out the inside of the U, leaving a big U shape of clay behind. And that gives us a crucible. To make a, uh, a blast furnace, we need two crucibles. So let's get a second one here. And I'm also going to make a third because outside of the blast furnace, the crucible can also be used on a forge. Whoops, shift place. For example, like if I click on this now, you'll see it has all these slots here and that can be used to melt down um, uh, the, uh, the ores that can be, the ores that can be smelted, uh, in a, um, in a pit kiln. Um, and it can also be used to melt down ingots and even anvils. So for example, if I wanted to recover the copper in this anvil, I could throw it in here and then fire up the forge. The only problem with it is that you have to, to access the forge, you have to get at this little crack down here in the middle between the bottom of the uh, crucible and the top of the forge and click there. So it's a little inconvenient if, uh, so if you want to be, that's too loud. If you want to be working a lot with the forge and you don't need the crucible, then take it off. Okay. So that's our crucible. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is some fire bricks, which is the other thing we use the uh, fire clay for. And for that, we are going to need some mortar. And through the magic of editing, I'm going to magically fill this. Uh, I always want. I always keep calling them buckets, barrels. So I'm going to fill this barrel with ten water. There we go, presto. Take this inside. Open it up. And we will need 20 flux. Turn that into 
slime water. And the next thing we need to make the mortar is we have to put some sand in there. I'm going to go put in a stack of 20 sand. I'll be back in a minute after I collect the sand. Okay, I have 20 sand on me now, and put that in here and seal it up, and we'll end up with mortar in eight game hours. <clears throat> I think I'll end up with 200 mortar, so I guess each sand you put in then uh, will give you 10 mortar. I thought the, the wiki says I think it uses, each sand uses 1,000, but that means that these 20 should more than use up all this lime water, but I know they don't. So we'll just measure the amount of lime water that's left when, we, when we're done with that. Okay, the next thing we're going to need is um, a lot of iron. And that's not nearly enough. So, montage time. Okay, that's a little bit more like it. Uh, actually, imagine this is much, even, even fuller than this, maybe about full up to here, because I forgot to uh, display the, the uh, fruits of my labors before actually starting to smelt some of it. So just pretend that this is much fuller and we go, ooh, ah, look at all the extra ore we now have. Anyway, so that should do us for, for where we need to go to. Uh, let's go back and look at making crucibles. Well, look what happened here. I just came out to milk the cows and well, one of our little sheep has escaped. Apparently they can climb under the fences when they're very small. But we also have, that's our other little sheep. We've had a couple more. So we had one, two, three big sheep before. And then we had two small ones. I'm losing track. There's another one in here, isn't there? Yeah. And we've got two more. So, let's get our barley out here. Our green. And I familiarized the last set of two, so i got to find the two smallest ones. And you're gray-eyed, so... Here for the slaughterhouse soon, but you two can get the leaven on and start some more. And uh, the cows are still uh, childless, calfless. Yeah, that's a better word. All right, back to our blast furnace making. Uh, while we wait for our mortar to uh, <laughs> to uh, mature, uh, we can make some fire bricks. So, fire brick. There's a difference between fire brick and fire bricks. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so the way we make fire brick is we take our fire clay again. This is the other use for fire clay. Uh, at least five of them in hand and we nap them. And we take out these rows like this. And that gives us three. Now, if you look, if you're familiar with classic TFC, uh, the way that you do it, uh, there we go, um, is you put four fire clay in your crafting grid, but in TNG you don't do that, you do the napping operation. Okay, now I've already made up a bunch of other ones, so we'll come on over here to the forge, which I've got warming, and we, these are our unfired fire brick. Okay, so now we have to fire them into, uh, f just regular fire brick. They'll turn brown when they're ready. So we have to wait for until they get hot enough. Um, I think it's yellow hot. Uh, sorry, I think it's yellow white. Might just be yellow, but I'm pretty sure it's up to yellow white. So I'll uh, come back in when uh, they get up to temperature. All right, so they're up to yellow white, which is as hot as they're going to get here. So we need to use the uh, bellows to bring it up to brilliant white. The white that's smarter than smart. There we go. And it holds it brilliant white for a little bit. Boom, chakalaka. And then we have to just keep repeating that because this is TFC. And uh, with all the others until we've done them all. But while we're waiting for these ones to cook, I can at least show you then 
what happens with these. Do I have enough? Yes, I do. I have five. Because our mortar is now ready. And you'll see we used up... So I put in 20 sand and it used up 2,000 millibuckets. So each sand uses 100 millibuckets. Okay. And you'll see I got 64 and 64 and 64 and 60. Wow, I got a lot. One, two, three, four, five. I got 320? That seems kind of odd. Well, beggars can't be choosers. Well, not even beggars. I mean, I'm being lucky here getting lots more than I expected. Anyway, I'm muttering again. So we take our fire bricks and we put them in this pattern. Or fire brick. Again, see, it's just singular. Fire brick. And we put mortar in between them. And that make, gives us two fire bricks blocks. <laughs> Gotta love TFC. And uh, these are what we're going to also be using in the construction of our blast furnace. So, got to do that a few more times. We need at least four fire bricks blocks to build the minimum. Is this guy up? Yeah, he's up to uh, temperature now. To build the minimum size blast furnace, I of course want to build better than just the minimum so I'm gonna fire all these things up and make a uh, make it at least uh, 12 I guess fire bricks blocks so I'll see you back when that's all done okay so we have our fire bricks I have the 12 I need but as I said earlier I for just the bare minimum uh, blast furnace uh, we need uh, just four fire fire bricks blocks, and also along that vein, to finish these off, to finish off the blast furnace, we're going to need uh, I think it's uh, eight double wrought iron plates and twelve single wrought iron plates, and that comes out to, if I remember correctly, fifty six wrought iron ingots, and this is just not enough. So we got to take a bunch of that lovely ore that we just mined and we got to turn it into these things. So uh, I think that, uh, that uh, justifies another montage. There, that's better. That should be enough now. Um, so one entire block of ingots piled up like this would be 64 so I'm three shy so I've got 61 so that'll be enough for our basic <laughs> for our minimal blast furnace uh, now I just have to turn these into 12 no eight double sheets and 12 single sheets so here we go with yet another montage Well, I've got my 12 wrought iron sheets, single sheets, and my 8 wrought iron double sheets. And that's what's left of my, what looked to me originally be massive stack of iron ingots. Not a whole lot left. But now we can get on and finish what we want to do here. So, first thing we want to do here is we want to create a blast furnace block for that we take a crucible and we surround it with double sheets blast furnace block okay now we're gonna need our second one of those and we're gonna need our fire bricks and our plates okay good everything's here Uh, what's a good place to position this? I think I'm going to want to go back like that. Okay, so at the bottom of the blast furnace goes a crucible block. Oh, I forgot one other thing. Give me a stack of these just to help with building. Okay. Stack two of those up there to give us something to work with. 
Uh, two above that, we build a chimney out of fire brick blocks. Okay. Uh, now we take our 12 sheets and on all the sides of these fire brick blocks. Oh. Ah. Mm. I fell inside. Okay, we put these on all the sides. Except the interior sides. We don't do that, of course. That's it. That's our 12. And then in the middle goes the uh, blast furnace block. And the way you expand it is by putting on, more, just like we did for the uh, bloomery, is you expand more of these. So that's why I have uh, eight fire bricks here. They'll let me expand two more levels, which will increase its capacity. But I'm, for each of those levels, I'm going to have to make another 12 iron sheets. So I will be doing that at some later time. Beautiful as this is, it's still not complete. There's a couple more pieces we have to add to it. Uh, but before we get to that, there are a couple of things I wanted to go over. Such as, I no longer need this block to protect this torch from the rain. Because these sheets are actually in the block above, and so they will block the rain. So it makes it a little cleaner looking area. Next thing... Uh, if we look at the date, we're now into early spring, the second day of early spring. Uh, that's how long it took to do all this in game time, is going and mining the ore. Um, I had to do seven uh, runs of the bloomery uh, to get enough of that ore into ingots. And then, of course, it took many days, yeah, I don't know, four or five days to turn all those ingots into the sheets we needed. So... That's a lot of time. And, uh, in fact, we've even got some fruit growing here. Uh, but the thing I want to point out is it did snow in that period. And uh, I think two or three episodes ago, I was talking about wondering what happens to these uh, withered uh, plants that weren't able to mature before the cold weather hit. And the snow doesn't affect them at all. So, so really, I can just leave them in if I wanted to. I don't know why I would want to, but again. Okay, so let's go back inside and uh, finish this blast furnace up. Okay, the last two things that we need to complete our blast furnace are a uh, bellows. We could steal the one here, but we'll make a second one. And we also need a thing called a tuyere. Now, a tuyere is a uh, basically a metal tube. Oops, to me. Uh, that goes that basically funnels the air from the bellows into the uh, into the body of the blast furnace, and that provides the blast of air that gives the blast furnace its name. Um, it can be made from the queer can be made from any tool steel. Obviously, the better this any tool metal, I should say. Obviously, the better the metal, the longer it'll last. Um, right now, uh, my supply of wrought iron is too precious to me for other things, and I happen to have uh, enough bronze ingots here, so I'll use them. so I'll use bronze for it. So uh, just ignore the raw iron bloom. I won't do anything with it on camera right now. But so we'll take these. We'll need four of these bronze ingots, and we'll get them warming up. Okay, and while we're waiting. Something just went into my... Oh, there, fire starter. Okay. I just heard it pop into my inventory. I guess I must have dropped it. Okay, uh, while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll make ourselves another bellows. Need three leather. And... Uh, six of these planks. There we go. Bellows. 
and we'll go and throw that in place. Now we have to make sure that the hole is facing towards the uh, the blast furnace block. So from this angle should do it. Let's just double check there. There we go. Okay, we have our working bellows. Okay. And this stuff, actually, I shouldn't have both of these. I shouldn't have all four in at the same time, or else two of them will melt while I'm working the other two. All right, so we're going to wait for these to heat up. Um, um, the, what we have to do is we'll form these two into a double ingot and make a, a bronze metal sheet out of it. We'll form these two into a double ingot, make a bronze metal sheet of that. Then we'll weld the two sheets together, make a double sheet. And you see me do all that before, so I won't do that on camera. Um, but at the very end, I'll bring you back in just to show you making the twee arrow to the double sheet. Okay, so we have our double bronze sheet in here. We come up to the plans. We select a bronze twee arrow, And we need two bends at the end. I wonder if I can get there just by doing nothing except bends. No. So, let's see. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay. Um, just leave that for the moment. Come out and put the tweer in our blast furnace. Goes up in here. And now we're finally ready to use it. So, what we need is... Whoops. We need... Uh, some ore. It can only take four pieces of ore at a time. Each level of the blast furnace here allows me four pieces of ore. And that's why I want to make it taller. I mean, four pieces of ore, if it's regular ore, that means I'll get one ingot out of each firing. I also need some flux. Equal amount of flux. And to start off with, well, we'll see if I can get this to work. To start off with, you need an equal amount of equal amount of charcoal as well. So it says that you have to throw them, you know, put them in all at the same time. And it's not kidding. The timing on this is a little bit tricky. I, I don't remember being this tricky in in classic TFC. But if they don't all go in within a very short time period of each other, then you end up uh then they end up popping back into your inventory. So I'm going to see here. There, got it. Okay. And, oh, I need a, uh, need another fire starter. Okay. And so we got to wait for it to come up to uh, heat. Now you'll see that it's, it, it's only taken in four units of fuel and four units of ore. Now, as long as I stay far enough away that it doesn't hop into my inventory, you'll see I've left excess charcoal just floating up there. That's the easiest way to do this. Um, so that's what I mean is you kind of have to th throw it in from far enough back that it, the excess doesn't pop back into your inventory. And so by leaving it up there, as the fuel gets consumed, it'll just grab more out of the stack that's floating around up there. And so we'll let this warm up. I'll, uh, I'll speed up time to get us up to that point. Okay, that's the size it's going to get, the way it is, um, without any further effort on our part. So now it's time to start using the bellows on the side. Okay, that has brought the temperature up high enough that this will eventually start to melt. Don't know how long it takes. And we just need to keep an eye out to make sure that there's uh, still at least four units of fuel up there and to keep it up to temperature. Yeah, I seem to recall, I'll have to try this out again off camera, is that what works best is actually letting it sit at that lower temperature for a certain period of time. That it seems like it just has to be in there a certain amount of time and then you can start pumping up higher temperature and it melts pretty quickly after that. There we go. You can see the melt is happening. Uh, now the first thing I want to do here is go and grab any remaining charcoal so it doesn't get wasted. 
because it'll just continue to consume the charcoal. Okay, and... Oh, so now you can see the pig iron is down in here. We can stick in an empty mold to collect it, but we have to still keep the temperature up high so that the pig iron... so the pig iron remains molten. There, it's back up, and now we've got the pig iron in the mold. Unshaped pig iron. And there's wasted fuel in there. That's one problem with my approach of just putting a big chunk of fuel up there, is it does end up wasting, uh, wasting some fuel since it keeps it topped up even after it starts to melt. But, you know, it's easier to waste charcoal than it is to... Wa to uh, Well, I shouldn't say it's easier to waste charcoal. It's I'd rather waste the charcoal than continue to have to keep running up top all the time and fidg fidgeting with the amount of charcoal to keep in there. Okay, uh, wait for this to cool down a little bit. There, it's solid now. Take it out. We put it in here, into the uh, anvil, and we're going to have to hit three hits to turn it into, I think, high carbon steel no hammer in the anvil oh that used up the hammer fortunately I have another one waiting the hammer wore it out hardly surprising with all that I've been doing to it okay okay it's now yes high carbon steel ingot and now we do the same thing again except it's not quite as bang on this time. There we go. And now we have our first steel ingot. And if you remember the drill from before, we can't really do anything with it until we've made an anvil out of it. And for the anvil, we need uh, seven double ingots. So that means I got to make 13 more ingots of steel. And using this thing, it's going to be one at a time. So off camera, I'm I will build this up to at least a three level, uh, a three layer one, so I can do at least three per, uh, three or process at least three or per run. Uh, eventually, I'd like to get up the full height, which I think is five. We'll see. But there we go. Uh, we've gotten into the steel age, sort of. We don't still we don't quite have the uh, uh, we don't. We don't have the anvil yet, but we're pretty close. So, um, hope you join me back next time when we will actually build the steel anvil and start and give ourselves a few steel tools. I desperately need to replace this axe, for example. Uh, the saw, however, is the same copper saw I started out with. Uh, don't go through saws very quickly. But yep, I uh, our, our first spring rain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that or learned a bit, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye now.